Hi, so we've got an interesting bit of um, professional expensive uh, gear to take apart. This is a transceiver unit for point-to-point -point microwave links for voice and data. Sort of thing you might see stuck at, in the top of a cell phone tower. There's an antenna that goes on here. Um, these are either you singly with a single antenna or they, they can actually mount, mount two of them with a couple or two. Sort of two units feeding a single antenna. The various versions of this are available between about 6 and 38 gigahertz. This is a 10 gigahertz unit. Data rates can vary between about 10 and 500 megabits. This this is basically the, this this comes in two two sections as another unit. Obviously, um, if you're doing a sit, you know, delaying something that's got to sit up a tower, you want to put as little as possible at the top of the tower for maintenance reasons. So there's another like rack mount box that this plugs into that does all the modulation demodulating. So you've got just an IF connection here, and there's a secondary connection. I think that might be for sort of management type data. I'm not quite sure what that stands for. It wasn't. I've got some documentation, but it wasn't really quite clear. What these are used for, but also yeah, this is just going to basically going to be containing sort of transmit receive sort of front ends and then work to an IF signal that's then handled down on the ground where you can actually access it more easily. So we're expecting to see some uh, interesting microwave voodoo stuff going on in here. So uh, let's take a look. Obviously, the front you've got this waveguide entrance because this sort of frequencies you use uh, plumbing rather than wiring. Right, well, I've already taken all the screws out of this. So the first thing we see is this basically chunk of metal. There's two sort of ports here and here that mate up with these uh, ports on this unit below. And there's all these um, adjustment screws. So um, these are marked L and H. First thought was these were combining sort of transmit and receive ports, but L and H, I wonder if it's actually low and high, sort of two frequency bands or something, but. Um, it, yeah, it looks like it's doing something with two, you know, the, the, two, the two channels here, two waveguides here and one coming out the other end, and a load of adjustments. Um, I suspect there's not going to be a lot in here other than uh, some sort of cavities, but uh, let's take it apart and have a look. Right, these microwave guys certainly don't skimp on screws. So it's in the magic box. Yeah, and as we sort of expected, it's just um, a series of cavities that these uh, screws are used to tune. I don't know whether they, uh, whether these will be done manually with sort of somebody with a grey beard and a time at the right angle, or whether they've got, maybe got some automatic process where they can just some robot or something you can automatically adjust these and um, set it up on some doubtless stupidly expensive bit of test gear to um, adjust whatever it is these things are actually adjusting but so there's all these sort of linked cavities here there's some looks like these slots sort of uh, I don't think they quite line up so you know, the, 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 the signal bounces sort of from top to bottom so it's like a sort of zigzag in this sort of direction. But a nice chunk of uh, expensive machining there. All right, next we have uh, this bit. Again there's a big chunky sort of machined uh, enclosure. A multi pin connector on here. Some engraved numbers there, 10.5 gigahertz and some uh, fairly conventional electronics on the board um, at the bottom. This is all fairly straightforward stuff. You've got the main um, coax connector and obviously power is going to be coming up the cable as well. So there's just this little isolation inductor and um, common mode inductor and a few other coils. This is all just going to be for filtering to extract all the, uh, the DC off of here. Then some uh, switching regulators with these planar inductors. You can see there's one here that's unpopulated so you've got the track on here and tracks on the inner of the PCB to form inductors for the power supply, um, just a few MOSFETs around here and here's a Freescale 16-bit um, DSP 
chip and a Xilinx CPLD, but it's not a huge amount, so I'm guessing that's probably only to do with like monitoring and I doubt that's, I wouldn't have thought that's handling the main data stream if it's, I don't know where this one sits in the whole 10 to 500 megabit um, product range. But interestingly, there's no coax from this this connector into the um, the microwave voodoo box. So they're just um, yeah running under this this connector. So, yeah, they, they've probably got sort of control transmission line through the middle of the PCB. But um, I'm a little bit surprised that there's no um, no coax coming off of here. But nothing else really of any interest on this uh, PCB. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Right, another few zillion screws to see what's hiding in here. Now, um, before we venture into a piece of kit um, of this sort of nature, I think it's quite important that we uh, take some precautions. No, not that. Now, when we're dealing with stuff like this, there are certain other precautions we need to take. We need to appease the gods of gigahertz. And we do this the same way this has always been done throughout the centuries, by making an offering or a sacrifice. Right, just looking closer at this, I've just noticed it has actually got ports marked um, RX and TX. So these are the receiving transmit ports that are combined with that top layer. So let's uh, see what magic lies inside. And we've got all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful RF goodness in here. Of course, as well as the, um, the PCB, we've also got some uh, yeah, machining on the covers. This also yeah, forms, it's not just shielding, some of these are you know, cavities that are shaped to um, yeah, provide tuning and resonance and all sorts of other things. It must be uh, rather interesting to prototype all this sort of stuff. There's a few little shielding pads in there that make contact onto um, some of these devices. Right, it's so over here by the transmit port. Um, we've got this. I'm guessing this is a, a sort of power amplifier, no doubt fabricated using some exotic material like gallium, ar gallium arsenide or something um, similar. And we've got what I'm guessing this is a sort of some sort of power sampling port. One interesting thing: there is actually a track that sort of runs from the transmit through here right up to the uh, receive so I wonder if that's maybe some sort of loopback test where it can internally send a signal for itself to receive just to do some testing or calibration or something and this, this is the, uh, I'm pretty sure this is all silver plated to uh, minimize the um, resistance on the surface and it's got yeah, via stitching galore all over the place it's interesting it's sort of quite big I imagine these big ones just maybe sort of slightly lower inductance, but in the unused areas, I think you've got some quite big holes. Whereas all the via stitching is on a much smaller size, but there's certainly plenty of it. And if we go back from the transmit, we've got this weird filter pattern. And some more weird alien shapes down there. More stuff here, and then that eventually runs back via a few more funny wiggly bits of this custom chip, uh, which has got the same make as the uh, manufacturer of the device. You know, I think both of these chips are actually got the same part number, so they're the same chip, but one's used in the transmit side and one's used in the receive side. So I wonder if maybe this is a, um, yeah, if you're going to do a custom chip with exotic technology, maybe it's works out cheaper just to do a single chip with both functions than two separate chips. It may well be that there might be some configurations where these connectors are like a transceiver, perhaps a lower powers or something. And it actually looks like the you know the RF ports do seem to go to the same pin. So here we've got this one that goes out to the transmitter and then we've got this one over here, which again is going out and again running eventually make, you know, making it to the um, the receive port. 
So we really don't know what's going on there. There's uh, some unpopulated components there and also down here again there's say quite a few versions of this so there may well be different variants on this board but I mean this is just a amazing collection of RF strangeness. I, say, I can't imagine how you go about prototyping something like this. I'd imagine you know, a lot of it's done in, in simulation first because if, if for your prototype you not only need to do this PCB, and obviously this, this light material, this is not standard fiberglass, this is some special PCB substrate that's got lower losses at high frequency. It's quite, it's very stiff, but it's sort of something fairly exotic and no doubt very expensive material designed to have low losses at the uh, these extremely high frequencies, but say not only is the PCB part of your design, but also you know all this stuff as well, all the um, machined cavities. So um, yeah, it's, it's a fairly serious development cost on this thing. And on the other side, there's not a great deal. There's a few odd, odd little bits, the capacitors and so on, and just mostly ground plane. And there's a few sort of block filters there. But I wouldn't really profess to know a great deal about this stuff. You know, I really only, you know, I could only tell the transmit from the C4 because it actually said TX and RX on the cover. Um, but we'll maybe take a uh, take a look at this power out module. See if we can see anything interesting in that. All right, so I managed to unsolder that um, RF power out module. So let's uh, work it under the microscope. Well, this is a sort of fairly low density device. It's um, Lots of wiggly sort of strip line stuff and a few die of no doubt fairly exotic material mounted and uh, bonded on there. RF magic, what a bunch of superstitious nonsense. Let's just pull this thing apart. <laughs> 